My name is Raymond Wing. I've been involved in genealogy since I was in high school you know, more than 30 years ago. You know, when I first got involved in genealogy, all I knew was my parents and grandparents, didn't even know my great grandparents' names, although my parents knew them. I was very fortunate enough that my family ancestry has come from areas where they have always kept the records well, so I've been able, able to successfully trace my family tree back. Not only do I have a number of Mayflower passengers, both of my parents do, all four of my grandparents do, and seven of my eight great-grandparents, I've been able to find Mayflower lines. The first question people may have is, is the Mayflower DNA project associated with the General Society of Mayflower Descendants? And right now, the answer is, at the present moment, no. We would love to have the GSMD host, it, or at least you know, sponsor and accept it, but currently it's not. And one of the reasons why we want to have involved in the process, you know, the, the GSMD and Family Tree DNA have teamed together to create their own Mayflower DNA project. What you're seeing right now is the Mayflower DNA page that uh, is sponsored by the GSMD and Family Tree of DNA. Yeah, they have, this is where they talk about it, they're about us, their goals and results. And the issue with Family Tree DNA is they do a great job doing the DNA and list it, you're being able to show the, the raw data. Yeah, this is the Y DNA data, but the, there's no place on their website where you can do more than just really look at the raw data. And that's where the Mayflower DNA Wiki really comes to assistance. This is the Y DNA data, and this is the mitochondrial DNA data. As you can see, all it really does is show these the results and that's it. Going over to the, to the wiki, this is the home page of the wiki and it talks a little bit about, you know, you can look at about the project. There's a primer for Y DNA and mitochondria DNA results and how you can help. And then the results, there's Y DNA of the, the male passengers, empty DNA of the female passengers and the spouses of the male passengers. And they've also gone and we're looking, started looking at the Y DNA and mitochondrial DNA of the spouses of the children and grandchildren. I'll go to uh, the Y DNA page first and uh, come up with a list of all the passengers. You know, it, it gives a surname, who was on the, which male passengers were on there for the family, whether they were aboard the Mayflower, which is everybody whether they have known living descendants today and whether they have long, known living Y DNA descendants. And then it lists the Y DNA haplogroup. For ones that are italicized like the Alden, it is only presumed based on string results. If it's not italicized, it's based on next generation genome sequence results. One of my lines is the Howland line and I can show you what that page is first. Yeah, it talks about, you know, it, at the top, it gives a little box of the contents and a little this, you know, index of what's involved. Then there's a summary that talks about what has been done today and what still needs to be done. And then we, there is a, the background talks about the G, paper trail genealogy, what we know. And in the Holland family, there is some speculative origins of the family. And then there's a biography of John Holland. It isn't exhaustive by any means, and different profiles have a different amount of data, but it, it's a quick biography, and it gives some of the descendants for a number, few number of generations. And these are all, they have different links and stuff. If you hit that link, it goes back to my, a tree I've created on it that gives a lot more sources and information. And, there's other, you know, there's a list of references down here for, for that first generation. Then it lists the genera second generation males. And what it's, this one does, it lists all the descendants that have done Y DNA testing. The ones in bold have done big Y testing so that we, we get the full haplogroup from. The ones that are not in bold have just done string testing, 
but the strings are matching the big Y results. So we know that they're family members. Then after this, on this one, it lists the DNA results. We do previous testing, which talks about testing before you do just a string testing. And you know, we talk about the fact that with John Howland, there was three brothers that came to America. There was Pilgrim John, his brother Arthur, and his brother Henry. And you know, it talks about in the string markers, there is a string difference within the descendants of Arthur. And it's, but the descendants of John and Henry don't have that string difference. No? Okay, then going on to NGS, hope, WGS testing, it documents the genea the clade of the family, which goes from U106, you through series mutations Z9 to Z30, to, you know, dot, 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 to Z6, A96, S10415, and A9703. This last SNP is one of 11 SNPs, which are, of which five are currently available at YC testing. But they're, they're, it's, those are the SNPs that have only been found currently within the Howland family. Interestingly, you know, for the Howland family, there isn't a, we cannot find a SNP that's unique to Pilgrim John Howland, but we can find the SNPs that are unique to his brothers. The Henry Howland descendants have been posited for this FGC58211 SNP, only found in descendants of Henry, but not found in descendants of John or Arthur. While the Arthur descendants are just positive for this FT62784 SNP. So what that means is if, if you can determine you, are, you, you fall under the A9703 SNP, but a negative for both of these other SNPs, you almost certainly are descended from John. You know, I always say almost certainly because we still have to do some more testing to make sure we cover all of the descendants of Henry in, in our study. You know, more stuff that talks about the ports of testings. And you know, this one gives a list of allied families and it lists a, a wide variety of links. Some of them are published books, including the Mayflower Silver Book series and a number of websites that talk about it. You know, there's a whole variety list of families. You know, all the May, all the Mayflower families are on here. It also includes, at least on this one, people that died the first year, or even they try to include people that are the sailors and stuff. We don't have any profiles in any of them at all. So that does the Y DNA of the passengers. And on the mitochondrial DNA, we list the passengers and the whites of the Mayflower passengers. One hint that you could use is if you notice all of the males are hyperlinked here as well. So if you want to go to the Y DNA profile for them, you can just click on it under the empty DNA and it'll give, give you back to the Y DNA profile of the male. But the, again, it lists all the, all the wives, whether the wife is aboard the Mayflower, whether they have known living descendants, and whether they have known maternal line descendants, and again, the half a group. And sometimes, like in the case of Priscilla Mullins, she falls under the H6A1A9 half a group, but all the, but especially for her, there are a couple of additional mutations that have been found in descendants. In, in this case, different descendants of Priscilla, some of them have one of the mutations, some of them have both. But those mutations, hopefully in the future, will, find, will define another further subclade. You know, it also happens, like you said, with the wife of James Chilton, who may be surnamed so Susanna, but even there, if you go in, into her profile, they'll go, you know, talk about the fact that they've been searching for her identity. And the only clue is about is in the 1840 history of Bridgewater, Massachusetts, by Nam Mitchell. He gave her name as Susanna, but it's quite possible this is inaccurate. So I do talk about issues such as that. And much of the time I try to err on the side of caution, but most, you know, because oftentimes when something's written down in writing, even though you put all the cautions in, people still don't read everything. So, you know, it's something that we gotta be careful with. But I'll go back again to the Howland in there. Here's Elizabeth Tilly, it gives, it's a similar, Certain thing, the biography, and in, in this case, we do list, try to list Elizabeth's maternal matrilineal line because it talks about her mother first, 
And then it talks about her grandmother, you know, her father and mother here. And Joan was married twice. Her first husband was Thomas Rogers. And again, it gives a biography with citations. And it, it, because there's about a bunch of hands history published on online, I mean, in, in journals, I list the journals where they're listed so people can look it up for themselves. And on the mitochondrial DNA results, you know, we, we do have a full mitochondrial test for her. And it comes up with a H1A1 with no additional mutations. According to the H1 Mitochondrial Genome Project, this dates back to 2500 BCE. So it's a very old haplogroup. As such, most people that will have this haplogroup will not be mitochondrial descendants of Elizabeth Tilly. But everyone who is a mitochondrial descendant of Elizabeth Tilly must fall under that haplogroup. And much like with the men, we have the dis mitochondrial descendants, first generation, second generation, third generation, and fourth generation. We've tried to list the mitochondrial descendants more generations than the Y DNA descendants simply because it is harder to find out the information on female lines. You know, unfortunately, genealogies even today still are pretty much biased in many ways on the male line. And this one, these are all the people that have test have done mitochondrial DNA testing. And we've got the results from two of Elizabeth Tilly's daughters, Desire and Hope. And because we have descendants from two of the daughters, we know that it goes back to Elizabeth and both of them match each other. And we have a list of allied families. And again, a list of resources. And again, there is a wide variety, you know, that was the, the, for the passengers and the wives of passengers. And then we have descendants of them. And up top, you can find which passenger you want to look for descendants of. Yet again, this time I'm going to choose the Howland family and a list under the spouse's name. I mean, it, it also lists the, the descendant themselves, Desire, John, Hope, Lydia, and Hannah, et cetera. And if it was, you know, this is the Y DNA result. So it lists the females here, their spouse, you know, the daughters and granddaughters here, their spouses. And then it lists whether there's known living descendants or known paternal line descendants in the Y-DNA haplogroup. Again, when it's italicized such as this one, it is predicted. And the reason why we're able to get this prediction so far down in the haplotree is you know, if you look on this site on the DNA results, there is one person who believes they are descended from John Gorham and they've done a 23andMe test. 23andMe doesn't test all the SNPs, but, but it did test enough to give down to the Z278 for this. But we also have one individual that's taken a big Y test. They fall under the Z278 and also have a couple of subclades below that. But we're going to need a second Gorham descendant to take a big Y test to verify this because we had previously had a Gorham descendant that was tested and they later on was able to document through paper trail genealogy. There was an NPE in their line where they had a, their Gorham line was adopted into the family. So ideally we'd like to have at least two males tested in order to verify the lineage. While most of the Mayflower passages themselves have been completed, there was a fairly significant number of, of the children's spouses and stuff that haven't been done the ones that have, are in blue that are hyperlinked, or, or if I've visited recently, are in red, those will all have their own pages to talk about. But for the ones that are in black, there is currently not a page yet developed for it. So that's the paternal line. And then there's also one in the maternal line that's been started, but it has a lot of empty spaces because it, you know, for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's much harder to trace them and number two, there hasn't been anywhere near as much D mitochondria DNA testing in documentation back to Mayflower passages as it has been from Y DNA. And again, going to Hollands, there has been, I think, some, yeah. Like Mary Skiff, wife of John Shipman, who is the son of Mitt Hope Holland. She goes back. If you notice, that went, I'll go back again. Mary Skiff, when you click on the link, it goes to the fourth generation because she is down here under the fourth generation. You go up to the top of this page and you see 
that her, her, her mitochondrial ancestry goes back to Elizabeth Walker, who was the wife of Richard Warren. That means Mary Skiff, wife of John Chipman, was a mitochondrial descendant of you know, Elizabeth Walker Warren. And one of the things you know, I, I found interesting as I've been starting to work on this is there's a number of non-Mayflower passengers, you know, immigrant ancestors who married several different times in the, the various Mayflower lines. And it's largely due to be, the fact that Plymouth Colony at the time was a very small population. But there's a lot of my, maternally related lines that haven't been researched very well. And this is an effort to start that research. Part of this research, you know, I presently have three articles under consideration for, between the Mayflower Descendant and the Mayflower Quarterly based on the, the research I'm doing on this. Strings are STR, short tandem repeats. There's two types of mutations in Y-DNA. They're the short tandem repeats and the single nucleotide poly, polymorphisms. Strings are what you normally order. You, you, they come in series, FTDNA, or you, know, you can order 12. I think they currently go to, to 37 and 111 currently. They used to have a variety of others and they are, they've, they've stopped offering many of them, but they, they are, you can predict a haplogroup based on strings, but because of the, they mutate frequently, they back mutate coincidental mutations, you are never fully sure of how accurate it is. The SNPs are, are very slowly mutating. It's estimated the mutations happens what, at a single location once every, I think it's like 1.25 million years. And the reason why we're able to see those mutations is we're looking at 5 million mu mu locations. So you multiply that 1.25, 1 in 1.25 by 25 million, and you can see you, we do come up with some mutations. But that's the difference between the two. Currently, we haven't examined autosomal DNA yet. By and large, autosomal DNA is good for roughly four to six generations back. And the nature of DNA inheritance itself is such that you, you, by the time you get back to the Mayflower times, you only inherit autosomal DNA from a tiny, tiny fraction of your ancestors. And even if you did inherit some autosomal DNA from a Mayflower passenger, and if you met, have a DNA match to someone else who descends from that same passenger, there really is no way to determine whether that match is actually through that passenger, or whether that match is through another common ancestor the two of you have in the last several hundred years, or whether if it's a real small match, whether it's just identical by state rather than identical by descent. And I'm sure you, Tim can answer that question much better than I, but you know, that's just the basic summary of that. You know, we would, when and if we find a way to use autosomal DNA to go to back to Mayflower time period, we would be more than happy to consider exploring autosomal DNA. But at the present time, we have no way, way of really thinking about how to do it that far back. Winslow is a family I've worked with a bunch. You know, the Winslow is, is a fairly unique family as well in that there, was, there were five Winslow brothers that came to, New, you know, came to New England, two of them aboard the Mayflower, your Governor Edwin and his brother Gilbert, the other three came over later. Sometimes, in the, like with the Winslow family, there's been a lot of stuff printed and published over the past years regarding their ancestry, and it's quite tangled up. And as I, you know, as I say, you know, we know for a fact the five people with brothers are sons of Edward Winslow and Magdalene Oliver, and we have their marriage, and we also have the, the parish church records, interestingly enough, not only listed their baptismal dates, but also stated in the baptismal record they were like they were born the Friday previously, so we could figure out their birth dates for the for the immigrant brothers as well. And this one I've given to all five brothers here. Gilbert Winslow, while he was a passenger, we don't know if he had any children, and his descendants haven't been traced, so it's basically dead in line in terms of to the DNA tracing. But the other, there was a brother, John, who came on the fortune. John married Isabella 
Chilton, who was the daughter of James Chilton, who was a Mayflower passenger. So John Chilton does have Mayflower descendants through his wife. Many of these links here are linked to pages that you know, trees that I've created. This one here is show the and you know I've I've tried to list a large as many sources as I can find on it. And if I haven't found online where somebody shows a complete clear line of descent and proven, I've gone through and personally try, especially on the mitochondria DNA side, try to find out whether there were still living lines of descendants. And most of the time, when you go to the pages, like, let me see, like Mary Simmons, wife of Joseph Alden, I have gone through and verified, I've actually found living descendants of this line. And Mary was a sister to Rebecca, who married John Soule, another Mayflower passenger. And I've gone through that line and verified that there's living mitochondria descendants of that. So here's a family, Sarah, wife of Moses Simmons, who you know, neither one of them were Mayflower passengers, but they married into two Mayflower passenger lines. Tradition has said that Sarah was Sarah Chandler, daughter of Rob, Roger Chandler, who married a Chilton. But we've, you know, more recent research has proven where Sarah, daughter Roger Chandler, has married a Solomon Len Leonard. On the other hand, there was an Edmund Chandler of Duxbury who also had a daughter, Sarah. His will lists his three, three unmarried daughters, Sarah, Anna, and Mary, as well as a fourth daughter, Ruth. The th first three daughters were given 3,500 weight of sugar from the Barbados, and the fourth daughter was given some, given some property and stuff. And most traditional researchers have assumed that the four daughters were all unmarried, but the, Edmund Chandler, when he died, he died and he was about 80 years old, so all of his daughters would have been a marriageable age and have been very rare for four daughters of marriageable age all to be married at that time. And the, you know, I, I've got a paper currently submitted to Mayflower Descendant to, that Sarah was likely the daughter of Edmund Chandler, and I'm using from this research. And there, there was a court case the year after the father died between Edmund Chandler's son Samuel and Moses Simmons regarding a property division. And you know, it's, I, it looks like the property was property was given to the son Samuel by the father's will. And it appears that Samuel divide, wanted to divide that property with Moses Simmons. And why, I'm, I'm conjecturing that it's pro probably why, because Sarah was his sister and that you're trying to link that. And I've got reached out to the Chandler Family Association to see what they think about that. And also reached out to Mayflower descendants to see if they're interested in publishing that. But they, you know, there is a large, no, lot of information one of the things I've had to do, unfortunately, I'd love to add is these uh, links, uh, source information there. It's under, it's under the person's name, even though I'd like to have it over here under the X, but if I added this, that documentation over here, it causes problems, so I have to look here. But it's, it's X there, and if you look under the footnote, they say Alton and Elizabeth only had three sons, so that there cannot be any living mitochondria DNA line. And if you, you know, and oftentimes when you look, when you see the same haplogroup, it would mean that they're, these people are maternally related, almost certainly. In this case, Hannah Rogers and Sarah Bartlett both are mitochondrially related. They're both descendants of Priscilla Mullins. Richard Warren, Y-DNA, Warren Richard. Again, it gives speculative origins because, because They've been found to Richard Warren baptized in St. Albans, Hertfordshire in 1585, son of William Warren. And there's some researchers that believe that that may be the Mayflower passenger. It's not known for certain, but it is, it is something for, up for research. And again, I don't know if people have seen this Free K or UK site. It's a site where they've transcribed um, some, some English parish records. This one is of a Richard Warren, son of a John Warren, born in Cornhill, near Lo you know, Cornhill, London, in 1578-980. So that's another possibility for the for Richard Warren's parentage.
And then when you go to first generation, it goes the proven orig origin has not been discovered. And his first known record is to his marriage. And then second generation, he had two sons. And then this, the, the sons there, the, the sons are included later, but except for people like Jabez, who's never married, but the daughters are, there's hyperlinks to their families. And then the third generation. And I typically, males only go down to three generations in here because you can usually have an easier time tracing them. And then there's previous Y-DNA results. Currently, this is an interesting issue because currently we have two people who claim they are patrilineal descendants of Richard Warren. One of them falls under half of group E and the other one falls under half of group R1B. Obviously, both of them cannot be dis patrilineally descended from Richard Warren, but until we get more testers to test, we won't find out which is accurate. And another tool I've used oftentimes is this NevGen haplogroup predictor. I don't know if people have used that before, but it has the ability, if, if you have somebody, it's done like 111 Y strings, you can enter the results in here, either through these boxes here, or enter them in here with commas. And especially if you're oftentimes, your family tree DNA would show you, give you a predicted haplogroup. And oftentimes the most, most common one is R1B, or you can, you know, by clicking that menu bu settings button, you can come in here. And if you have 67 or more markers, and you know the ha it's a half one of these half groups, you can click on that and to make sure you know, test, it'll give you subclades for that. Again, these are only predictions that you have to test to be sure. But I found in general that predictions tend to be fairly accurate because when you've done predictions and then later on we had big Y or other NGS, WAGS testing to confirm the lineage, it, it, the prediction was fairly accurate. In NGS, WGS, the abbreviation I've used a fair bit, next generation sequence and whole genome sequence. Next generation sequence testing is stuff like family tree DNA's big Y test or family, uh, there is a, a full genomes that has a Y elite test, which is a bit different, but fairly similar to the big Y test. And then the whole genome sequence testing, you, there are a variety of companies that offer you whole genome sequence testing at various levels. And depending how full they are, that is something that may be able to use to look to, for, for these results. And another item, if you go to back the very top, you'll notice that we do have a tab for autosomal, but not yet started. One of the things I have recently done is I've reached out to Family Tree DNA to see if they'd be interested in doing any X DNA testing because the X chromosome, you know, it's a sex-based chromosome. Males only inherit it from their mothers and females inherit a copy from both parents but their father's copy is only from their father's mother. So it's a limited number of people that you inherit it from. So it's, it go, you can tend to go back a little bit further in many cases than you can with regular autosomal. I'm not sure yet whether they're able to go back to the time period of the Mayflower family or not. But when I reached out to Family Tree DNA on it, they said that they, they, they had offered some limited testing in the past. It was not well received that if they were, before they'd be able to offer it again, they would need to ensure that there is enough interest in xDNA testing to make it worth their while. And as a business, you got to understand that. You know, I've talked to some people about it and there is some interest, but I'm not sure whether there's ever going to be enough interest to make it worthwhile for a company to make it available family, Jane Yates, who was, you know, there was a winter 2020 Mayflower Descendant article about the family. And it, 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 was, it finally was able to identify the maiden name of William Collier's wife, who was Jane, Jane Yates. She married first Thomas Clark and second one Collier, and they list the children here. And then we go through and list her grand, you know, their children, their daughters here, their granddaughters here. And it, it, First one is interesting because Sarah Walker was the wife of Nathaniel Warren. Nathaniel Warren's, there was a will where, I think it was Jane's will, she mentioned her granddaughter, Sarah Warren. How, however, we don't, we're not fully sure of how she was her granddaughter. And so that's why this is still hypothetical. 
some of these links are getting, you know, especially the online links. I've noticed some of the some of the sites are no longer active since I was created them. There was uh, one between the well, I can't, can't remember. There was a, a 2020 site that I noticed was has been taken down. So I've, we've got to still go back and get through it. Another thing I think about, I probably should explain about the history of this wiki. I'm a, ma I'm a major contributor to it, but I did not create this wiki. The individual who created this wiki, it was created back five years ago. They've been involved in genetic genealogy for a number of years. They, you know, they have recently become very involved in the COVID epidemic because they are in the genetic sphere and they are no longer, you know, they're not able to really dedicate much time to this project. So uh, you know, while it's ideally, it's, it's a wiki where they're supposed to be contributors to allow you know, collaboration between people. Unfortunately, you know, I've had conversations with them about this and to date, you know, he's very leery about others coming in because if he's afraid of this inform you know, information that isn't correct being put on and he doesn't have enough time to dedicate to fixing them. There is a whole lot of information as you can see on this site, you know, like I said, I've I've put in the vast majority of this information myself over the five years. I would love to have help. And I would encourage anyone that has that knows of any information that's incorrect, any additional information that should be added on there, feel free to contact me. The best way to contact me is right here at this email here. Mayflower DNA1620 at gmail.com. I've created this email specifically for my Mayflower DNA work, as opposed to my own personal genealogy work. Peter Brown, as you can see, there's no living paternal descendants of, of Peter. And you could go to the site and it'll show that Peter Brown was the son of William Brown. He was married twice. His first wife was married after the 1623 Land Division, but she died before the 1627 Cattle Division. His second wife was Mary. Peter had two daughters by his first wife and had a daughter by his second wife and a child who likely died young by his second wife. So that's the end of the Y DNA trail. But if we go to the mitochondrial DNA, DNA trail, go to Brown, his, through his first wife, there was no living dis mitochondrial DNA descendants. And through his second wife, Mary, this a small number of female descendants of the sixth generation, mitochondrial DNA generation of the sixth generation. It is likely they're still living mitochondrial DNA descendants, but I haven't tried that myself. Now you can go through here and you'll see that there's Mary, the second wife, and she had two children, and the only daughter was Rebecca. Rebecca married William Snow, and they had children. And then all of her daughters over here, Mary, Anna and Rebecca, and then all of their, their daughters are listed here. And we currently don't know of any descendants, so we don't know of any mitochondrial DNA. And again, there's a list of references here. Unfortunately, basically a one-man show, namely me, I've been working on it. I work on it every day, updating it. I would love to have help, but unfortunately, even that is somewhat difficult because I, I'm not the administrator currently to this, so I can't grant anybody the ability to add to it, but I would love people to feel free to contact me if you have any updates, additions, corrections to make, and I will work on making changes to it. Here's the Y-DNA for William Brewster. It's interesting on the Brewster family in that somebody that works at Family Tree DNA, they're a Brewster and they haven't been able to trace their line back to Elder William Brewster but they've taken the big Y test, they've done you know, all, all the Y sniff testing and Y string testing. They're a perfect match to Brewster descendants. So it is believed that they would be able to join under that. You know, under the William Brewster, you know, Brewster it talks about the short thing of his biography, talks about he's the son of William Brewster II. He's known to be the grandson of William Brewster I, I hypothetically. And some sources say even that William's the son of another William Brewster, but that's unverified. Brewster was married to Mary, whose surname is unknown, despite an extensive search. They had children. And Jonathan, I, I spell it this way specifically with two N's, J-O-H-N-N, because in his Brewster book, 
And in every signature I found, that's exactly how he's consistently spelled his name. Some people, you know, would spell the name, spell, you know, the spelling wasn't standardized and it wasn't unheard of for people to spell even their name differently in different documents. But at least with Jonathan's case, I've never seen a case where he spelled his name other than this way. And there, there's William Brewster and his family. Even Brewster's children, there was a possibility of him having more children because Bradford didn't ex make it clear exactly how many children he had. So, but these are only talking about the ones we've known he had. In Running with Mary, you know, they had three sons, but the son wrestling never married. So the second generation is through two sons, Jonathan and Love. Interestingly, the string data shows where the sentence of Jonathan had DYS 19 equals 16, while the descendants of love have DYS 19 equals 15. So we're able to, you by string markers, be able to see the difference between them. And you can even see that in, in more detail if you go through, the, there is a Brewster DNA project. I had it up earlier, but I don't have it up now and you can see all that. There is also some unconnected Brewsters who appear to be descendants of running and Brewster, but interestingly, their DYS 19 is 14, which it makes it believe that Love had the ancestral value and Jonathan had the mutation. And you know, here's the two sons, Jonathan and Love. It just lit, you know, Jonathan only had one son that ended up getting married and Love had three sons, but one of them had no children. So the third generation, there's three men, Benjamin, William, and Wrestling. And then it goes to a fourth generation, Benjamin's children's, William's children, I mean, William's children and wrestling's children. And then the DY, the DNA results, we've been able to, you know, somebody has taken, we've had a couple of people take the test, and they've fallen under this haplogroup, which is under IM253. That haplogroup, plus the fact William Brewster lived, it was from the, the Brewster family is from the York, Nottingham, Shire, England area, makes us believe that his direct male ancestor, it's leaning towards Viking ancestry for them. There, you know, in different lines, you can give different hypotheticals. The Winslow family was an interesting one because they, there is a town of Winslow in Scandinavia, and the Winslow haplogroup is, looks like to be a Scandinavian haplogroup. So it appears that the Winslow family the, the paternal ancestor probably was a Viking ancestor. And there was another family, I can't remember which one off, offhand it was, that appeared to have a haplogroup associated with the Roman Empire. And so it's possible his male line ancestor, direct male line ancestor, may have been a Roman soldier who settled in Britain. Those are serious speculations, but it, it is provides something. And these are the lines that have been tested for William the direct mail lines, I've done big Y testing. One of the things I do plan on adding at some time, these are the ones that have done big Y testing. There's further lines that have done some Y DNA testing, but haven't been big Y tested. I do plan on adding them like I did for the Howland family, put these in bold and have the other ones in non-bold. So that was the Y DNA line. And on the mitochondrial DNA line is Mary. We do know we don't know her maiden name, but we do have a direct mitochondrial descendant who has tested, done you know, full mitochondrial DNA testing, and they've come up with haplogroup I4A. That's a fairly rare haplogroup, oftentimes found in England and Scotland, and sometimes in Brittany, France. That kind of location leads one to suspect that the Mary was likely from the Yorkshire or Nottinghamshire area that William was in, which makes sense in that, it, in all of that, but it, it, her apple group does support that as well. And with Mary, you know, we've, we, you know, again, we talked a little bit about it. We, there isn't much known about her. We do know she was age 40 on 25 June 1609, you know, when there was an affidavit filed. She's believed to be the only wife and it lists her children. She only had one child, one daughter that ended up with surviving children and grandchildren, that was Patience. And then Patience had just three children, three daughters that had daughters and daughters. And then there it goes to the fourth generation here. And we do have some list of some of the other families that married into the Brewster family and a list of citations. Christian Penn.
Yeah, she was, you know, as you know, she was the wife of two Mayflower pastors, Francis Eaton and Francis Billington. And, uh, you know, as I put in there, like most women of the period, almost nothing is known about her. Well, about the only thing that's known about her is her marriages and her children. So it talks about the children. And she had all of her daughters that left children are by her first husband. And there was one, two, three, four, five of them. And then their children are down here. And then the fourth generation, this goes in fourth generations. At the present time, we don't have, I, I'm not aware of any mitochondrial DNA descendants of Christian who, who has taken a full mito mtDNA test and published the results, at least, or at least let, let me know about it. They're not in the Mayflower DNA project. And we do encourage people to test. And I'm going to, but today, as far as I know, none of the crew members are known to have descendants living today. I mean, every once in a while, I do see people claiming that they descend from Christopher Jones, who was a master of the Mayflower. But my understanding is that's never, you know, that is, nobody's ever been able to adequately document a line of descent from any of the sailors. And, and as was just done, I'd, like I said, I'd love to be, to edit profiles, add information to make it easy because it is hard enough to get people to test. My, you know, one of my biggest drawbacks, most people that do this sort of thing and recruit people to test all, almost always open up their pocketbook and offer to provide testing. And that's something I'm definitely not in the financial position to be able to do. But you slowly but surely, things are happening. And, if, and again, going to Christian Beer, what I've tried to do oftentimes is you know, here's her, her daughter, Elizabeth Billington, and she married Richard Bullock. Richard Bullock has his own page in here that you can access from that page. And it talks a bit about Richard. And Richard married first to Elizabeth Ingram, but they, that's not Mayflower Pass related, and then married secondly to Elizabeth Billington. I, I, I do it out of a labor of love. I do think it helps a lot of people, but at least I'm giving, I'm giving it a try that isn't happening otherwise, because it provides information that cannot be provided on the FTDNA pages, and, and they, they know it. And often, oftentimes, I'm finding when I, you know, even this morning, earlier this morning, I was looking at a site that was talking about uh, the Alden family and William and Alice Mullins. And when I, through my work on here, I had found an article in the Mayflower Quarterly in 2012 where Kayla Johnson had published, and he's, he did research on the Mullins family to try to find out information on him. And while he wasn't able to prove much on him, on his wife, you know, he, he, the information he found led him to believe that it's quite possible William Mullins was married twice and that Alice was his second wife and not the mother of his children. Interestingly, you know, here's, he, 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 he believed that Alice may have been either Peter Brown's mother or married to Peter Brown's uncle was widowed and then married the widow of William Mullins. So, and there is a link, you know, that quarterly is available if you're a GSMD member, you, that quarterly is available on, on their site, but you have to enter the members area and then look for the March, 19, March 2012 issue. And it's this one here, Mayfair Quarterly, volume 78, March 2012, page 4157. That article is available. You know, not many people have gone further with that because there's still people that talk about Alice you know, and Alice possibly being, you know, Alice Wood or other things. And, you know, this is just, a, you know, it's speculation, but it does make you think, hmm, possible. But you, you learn so much more about history. And like I said, tracing some of the mitochondrial lines, I've just started doing it. And I've learned so much more about how interconnected families are on the mother's side, because it's much harder to see that than on the father's side, because when you get maternal cousins, you really lose out on that ability to see how they were related. Love you know, people, you know, if you have any ind additional information, any corrections, you know, if you know of places, places that would be willing to sponsor some tests, I'd love to add that information in.